Hi, everybody. This is Rachel Kiefer of Health Nut Girl. Um, I am an integrative nutritionist and a holistic health coach, and I lead women health circles, and I work with women in helping them create um, beautiful, healthy lives by falling in love with a healthy life. And I am very happy to be here today on this live class. And if you are here, can you just um, um, show me like a like or a thumb up or a heart just to let me know that you can hear me. And um, to get the most out of this class, I would recommend that you don't multitask as you're listening to it, you know, like sit down. Um, take a note and a pen and a notebook and a pen so you can take notes of things that you want to try and make yourself a cup of tea. So if you are watching it live, um, I hope that you already have that. And if you are watching the recording, um, just pause the video and um, come back. And uh, use this time to really nourish yourself. This is a class about how to take care of you and how to take care of your health and you deserve that time. You are worth it. You are totally worth it. Um, so here's what I'm going to talk about today. Today's class is going to, we're going to take a look at two things. Uh, the first thing that we're going to take a look at is um, why we have those health struggles. What are three ways that we were conditioned as young girls and as women um, that help create those struggles but also fuel them and keep them going. And the second thing that I'm going to share with you is how to take those three ways that we were conditioned and turn them into inspired action that actually will help you to move forward and, and help you reach your health goals and stay inspired and not stay stuck in those struggles. Um, and as I'm going along, I'm going to do little pauses to take a look at my notes so I can remember to tell you everything that I wanted to tell you. So, um, you know, like I have been working with women for over 35 years, and I often work with women who um, won't cook for themselves. You know, sometimes I work with women who have been um, wives and mothers, but now they are, the children grew and left the home or and, uh, their relationship ended for one reason or another. And they just tell me like, I won't bother cooking just, it's just me. I don't want to bother to cook just for myself. Um, sometimes I work with women who, um, work, you know, like they have um, a busy work life and they won't drink the water because they don't want to take frequent bathroom breaks. And these are not unusual cases. These are very typical. These are things that I hear over and over from women that I work with. And um, this um, um, struggle that we have with taking care of ourselves and taking care of our health is something that is really across the board. And sometimes I work with women that feel very frustrated that they have a health struggle that's been going on for many years and they don't feel why they can't figure it out and they are women that are otherwise you know like very intelligent and very brilliant and have achieved a lot of things in their lives and they're strong and powerful and capable and yet that's one place where they're stuck and they can't figure out why i'm still having this health struggle why am i why aren't I able to figure it out? So um, let's go over those three ways that we were conditioned that make it hard for us to figure, th figure this out. Um, one way is being a caretaker. And um, we as, um, since we were baby girls, and as we grew up and as adult women, we are conditioned to be in the role of the caretaker. Um, this is something that, yeah, this is a message that came at us from our families, 
from our schools, from our neighborhoods, from society at large, from the world. And it's not a bad role. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong. It's wonderful to be someone who is a giver, who is a nurturer, who has a big heart. But we grow up with that example of what we should be. And when you look at our mothers and our grandmothers and our aunts, oh, hi, Michelle. Welcome. Good to have you here. Can you just give me like a like or a heart to let me know that you can hear me? Okay. I hope you can all hear me and I just have not been talking to myself so far. Um, so it often can come on the expense of ourselves. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Super. Um, so I look at my own life. And when I grew up, I remember the women in my family would get together and they would get together and they would talk and they would usually talk about other women. And when they would talk about someone who takes care of herself and they would say, oh, look at that woman taking care of herself. It was not said as a compliment. It was said as a criticism, as if there's something wrong with women who take care of themselves. And then the women who are like the, those self-sacrificing women are the ones that were admired. And we have this like notion in our society that the self-sacrificing women are the ones that are, those are our heroes, those are our role models, those are the women that we all admire. Um, so, um, you know, like I've, I've worked with so many women and I've had that struggle in my own life is how we as women, we will take care of everything and everyone first. We will take care of our families. We'll take care of our children. We will take care of our friends. We would take care of our neighbors. We will take care of our work and coworkers and bosses. And we will take care of, um, our pets and our plants and uh, causes that are important to us. And put ourselves last on the list. So that's one way that we were conditioned, you know, like and when you are conditioned to not prioritize yourself and you won't prioritize your health as well. Um, the second way that we were conditioned is to not listen to ourselves. Um, we are born with and, you know, like a natural intuition and gut feelings and inner knowledge about what is good for us. But it has always been treated dismissively by a lot of factors. So one of the ways that it's been uh, treated dismissively is that we are, um, you know, like presented with the experts. And the experts can be doctors health practitioners, um, authors of diet books, di different dietary systems and modalities. Um, it can be um, the f information that we get from the food industry. It can be nutritional information that we get from them, whoever they are. And we are told that those facts are uh, the truth and that what we feel inside is often not the truth or not a good guiding system for us. So I'm not saying that we should not use all those resources and information. It's so important to have a good doctor that you can go to that will take care of you and take care of your health. And it's good to go get information and it's good to get guidance. But uh, again, this is something that comes on the expense of our own relationship with ourselves, with our inner knowledge, with our intuition, with our connection with our own body. So that's the second way that we have been conditioned. Um, a third way that we have been conditioned is that we get a big message to do things alone. The way that we used to live as humans, if you look at our, all of our human evolution, 
The way that we live now is very recent and a drop in the bucket. And that is, we live a life that is so much more isolated than how we used to live in the past. Even a generation or two ago, people lived very differently than the way that we live now. People lived in communities and people live in extended family units. And today we live in a nuclear family units and it's not unusual for women to live alone. You know, it's just them and their four walls, you know. So it's a, a way of life that is very different than how we always lived on this planet. And that is, uh, gives us a big push to think that we need to do things alone. The other message that we get is from, you know, like, rules that we get from the diet industry and different diet modalities and food rules and um, that we need to try really hard to work their system and um, uh, and they give us rules that don't really work so when we try really hard and then it doesn't work and then we feel bad and then we think that we are failing and then we think that we have to try even harder and we do all that alone without any support system and then we are surprised why it's not working and we feel so bad about ourselves when in fact it's not us that's the problem it's the way that we do it it's the way that it's presented to us and it's things that we try to follow that don't really work um so that is the number th third way that we have been conditioned and i think that women should get medals for how hard they try we try so hard and when you try something so hard and it's not working please know that it's not you that's the problem it's them whoever is trying to make you follow something that's not workable um so now i'm going to give you Three ways that you can turn it around by taking inspired action and contradict those three ways of conditioning. The first one is to prioritize yourself. And I cannot say this enough. You cannot create a healthy life. You cannot achieve your health goal if you do not prioritize you. Prioritize yourself. And prioritizing yourself and your health is not selfish you are a totally worthy human being and you deserve to put attention on yourself um now there's a lot of messages out there about you know like um you need to take care of yourself in order to take care of others you know a lot of times people use that analogy of um, you know, like when you're on the airplane and the mask falls down, you have to put your own mask first before you help someone else. And that's a step in the right direction for women to take care of themselves. But that's still like the purpose of taking care of yourself is so you will take care of someone else. And I want us to challenge that too. You know, like I said, like I said it's a wonderful thing to be loving and to have an open heart and to want to help others and do things for others. Um, but not because you are not important. I want us to really internalize the fact that we are important. We're important to do things just for us, not because it will make us better caretakers. So um, challenge that in your own life. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little homework and that's gonna be your inspired action. It's gonna be fun homework, not hard homework. Uh, and that's gonna be your inspired action. So this week, something that I want you to do is I want you to do something just for yourself. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to do it alone, but don't do it as a way to take care of someone else. There's something that is just for you. And it's going to be different things for different women. So I want you to think about what is something that you wanted to do, but you don't. Something that would make you happy and joyful, but you don't take the time to do it. Uh, maybe you want to go on a day trip somewhere that you always wanted to go to. Or maybe you want to go see a movie and don't usually go see a movie, but you really enjoy it. Or maybe you want to um, invite a few friends, a few good friends to a restaurant and tell them we're going to have a celebratory dinner and we're going to celebrate me and, you know, like, and have them say things that they like about you and have that evening be just about you. Um, and maybe you want to splurge on some healthy organic ingredients because you're worth it and you can cook something healthy for yourself. Um, 
call a florist, send yourself some flowers, you know, like think about what would that be for you? Like what is something that you think is a, something that maybe you would do for a dear friend, but you would not do for yourself. So um, that's your homework for this week. <laughs> do something just for you. Um, the second thing that will help you to um, take inspired action and hi Cindy, I see you joined us as well. And my husband is here, Izzy. Hi, great to have you here. <laughs> well, this is a, a, um, a class for women, but men are welcome to join us as well. <laughs> um, is to learn how to listen to yourself and learning to listen to yourself is something that a lot of people think of as it's something vague or I don't know how to do that or um, you know like a, it, it looks like it's a difficult thing but in fact learning to listen to uh, listening to yourself is the most natural thing this is something that we're born with this is something that um, is in us you know like we are part of this world we are part of this planet we are part of nature and we have natural instincts just like a plant or flowers know how to lean towards the light for nourishment we know how to lean to what nourishes us we have we're born with that knowledge like if you're someone who have house house plants and you put them next to a window you see that after a while the whole plant turns towards the window and you have to kind of turn them around it, because the plants know that light is the nourishment and it turns towards the nourishment um, so it's not so much that we need to learn how to listen to ourselves and to our bodies we have to relearn it because that connection with ourselves have been severed and um, I teach women health circles and in that those circles I go through a lot of um, um, strategies on and, and and ways that we can reconnect to that knowledge and reconnect to ourselves and to our bodies but today i want to do something short with you and we're all do, going to do it now together but then you can do it on your own as well so take a deep breath if you're not seated sit down somewhere and relax and take a deep breath ah sigh or just breathe out close your eyes and put one hand on your heart. Listen to your breathing. Feel the warmth of your skin. Feel your body's vibration. Listen to the vibrations of your heart. And tell your body, and you can say it out loud if you can, or just say it in your mind, I am willing to listen. And just stay there in that place of willingness. I am willing to listen. And then you can ask your body, what do you need? and write down the first thought that comes to your mind. And I know we did it now in this internet class and it's kind of rushed and you may be, not be in a place where um, you can do it comfortably. Um, so I do recommend that you do this exercise later. I recommend that you do this exercise often um, to get connected to yourself and your body. And it's like, you know, like, like practicing a muscle and practice listening to yourself and listening to your intuition and listening to your inner knowledge and being that place of willingness. And it's okay if you don't have any thoughts or anything that come up for you when you first do it, just keep on practicing. Something will come up for you. And then when you have a thought, write it down. Like that's a message from your body. Your body's telling you something. Um, so that is uh, the second inspired action. The third inspired action is how to create 
connection and support. And, you know, like we are not meant to live our lives alone and we are not meant to live a healthy life alone. We are creatures of community. And it's very important for us to do things, especially when we try to achieve big health goals or when it's something that we have struggled with for a long time, to do it with the support of a community. So um, one of the things that I talk about a lot, and if you heard me before, you probably heard me talk about it. It's something that I talk about a lot is the blue zones. And the blue zones have been a really big source for me of uh, learning and um, sharing what I've learned from that and really big source of inspiration. Uh, so I do recommend that you research it and read about it. But if you don't know what the blue zones are, the blue zones are five areas on our planet and they are in Japan, Greece, Italy, Costa Rica, and California, where large, like, um, relatively large percentage of the population live into their hundreds and 90s and hundreds. Um, and they don't live in hospitals hooked to machines uh, with debilitating diseases. They live a full and active life. Yeah, a little bit slower than when they were 20, but they still active and they still you know like live full functioning healthy lives and um, they live longer and in better health than anywhere else on the planet so there's been a lot of books and shows and research and articles written about the blue zones and a lot of researchers go there and try to like find out what are their secrets like what 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 are they doing how can we do it too and um so there's a lot of things about it. there's a lot of information about the blue zones and there's a lot of things about you know like how they eat and how they move but the biggest thing that unites them all and because they, they each have different things that are going on in each one but the things that really unite them all and that is common for all of them is that these places, uh, in these places, people live in communities. They live in, they get, have support. They don't live alone. They don't feel lonely. Um, they really have a life where they feel cared for and seen and heard and understood. And they have that built into their lives and to their communities. Um, I saw one show about the Blue Zone once where they showed um, a pair of twins, twin sisters, who were celebrating their 102nd birthday. And they were um, in a, um, um, in, a, at home and they, they share, you know, like they share a house together, they live together, but their extended family are all around them. They all live next to each other and they all come over every day and they eat their meals together. And like, there's such a communal life. Like they don't live alone. Even the two of them don't live alone. They live so connected to their extended family and to the village that they live in. So I'm not suggesting that you, you know, like sell your home or leave your town and go and live in the blue zones. Um, but think about what can you do to bring community into your life? And my third recommendation for inspired action for you is to join a group. And I want you to think about it. And today there are th th so many things that are, you know, like happening locally. And there are so many things that are happening online. So I think that it's, I think that for most people, I would recommend to do a combination of both, you know, like do something online and do something because, you know, like it's convenient and you can do it from home, but also do something local. So you connect it to like people in, in the flesh, not just on a screen. Um, so um, think about what is something that you would love to do with other people. It doesn't have to be health related. It can be, but it doesn't have to be health related. Like if you love to knit, join a knitting group. If you love to read, join a book club. Um, if you want to be more active, join a walking group. Um, um, and there are lots of like health groups out there as well. And that's one of the reasons why I have transitioned my own business 
from seeing clients one-on-one -on -one to working with small groups is to create that blue zone experience where the women that I work with uh, don't just get my support, but they get each other's support. And it has been a phenomenon and amazing experience for myself and for the women I work with to work in that setting of you know, like being together with a, with a group of women that are all working towards the same goal of creating a healthy life and that are all supporting each other with their health struggles. So it's just been an amazing inspiration. Um, so um, I will leave you information about my women health circles in the comments so you can go to my uh, web page and check it out. And I'm going to start um, you can, I'm starting a wait list for my fall group. So it's until the fall, my groups are full. But for in the fall, I'm going to start a few, a few new groups. So uh, definitely let me know if you're interested. I'll put you on the wait list and I'll tell you when the registration is open and um, welcome you into my groups. Um, so your three inspired actions this week is one, do something just for you. Number two, do that exercise with listening to your body. And number three, find a group online or offline that uh, you have a common interest with and become part of that group. So those three actions will help you to move forward um, in the places where you struggle and will really open up for you um, a, a way to move forward towards your health goals. Uh, so that concludes our class for today. I invite you to uh, sign up for my newsletter. It's free. It's full of recipes and information. And I'll give you notices about my future classes. And you also get a free three-day cleanse. So just go to healthnutgirl.com and you can sign up. I'll leave the um, web address on the comments as well. And I would love to hear from you if you can just share with us in the comments what is one thing that you are going to do this week that is just for you and that way you make that commitment to yourself public and that way you inspire each other to take that action. And it's been really great being here with all of you. I've had so much fun and I will see you at the next class. Bye.